Good afternoon. Thank you for being here with us today. It's an exciting day to be a tiger. I'm Michelle Earhart, Chief Marketing and Communications Officer. Giving you a little bit of the lay of the land, we're going to have some prepared remarks, and then when we're finished, we're going to take a quick break. The media is invited to this room right behind us to do a Q&A with Dr. Ed Scott, and I'm going to introduce you now to our president, Bill Hargrave. Welcome, everyone. Glad to see you um, on this uh, great day in the life of the University of Memphis. Um, before we get started, I want to recognize uh, a couple of folks. <clears throat> Our chair of our board of trustees, Cato Johnson, uh, thank you for being here. And we had uh, uh, one of our board of trustees members, Rob Carter, was around. I don't know if Rob's still here, but uh, appreciate all that um, our board of trustees do for us. I uh, also need to recognize uh, the search advisory committee that uh, we put together when we started this a couple of months ago, Dave North, uh, who chairs our athletics committee for the Board of Trustees, a member of the Board of Trustees, uh, Linda Black, Michael Cook, Willie Gregory, Richard Smith, and Rick Spell uh, just did a phenomenal job uh, for, uh, for us throughout this process uh, from looking at a lot of different uh, resumes and then narrowing it down to uh, a small group that, that we eventually selected uh, our next AD from. This was, and we knew going into this, this was, be, was uh, a coveted job. And uh, certainly the interest in the position uh, showed it. Uh, we used uh, Parker Executive Search and they, they did a, uh, an outstanding job for us of guiding us through this process and getting, to, getting us to this point today. And when I uh, met with Parker Executive Search and our Search Advisory Committee, uh, I, I, I told them in what sounded like simple terms, but certainly wasn't simple, what we needed to find was, for our next AD, somebody who wanted to be at the University of Memphis, not for who we are or who we've been, but for who we can be. We needed that transformative leader, that visionary, who could guide us through a very uncertain time in athletics. And ladies and gentlemen, we have found that person. It is my privilege to introduce the eighth AD in the University of Memphis history, Dr. Ed Scott. I just want to stand here and soak this in for a minute. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you know, you don't get this chance too often in your lifetime uh, to have your dream come true. Um, so, you know, I was thinking about what I was going to say today, and, and so I hope you all bear with me because I don't like to write a lot. Um, and you're going to learn about me a lot over time and who I am and the way I operate. But uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to thank some folks, uh, as Bill did, as President Hargrave did. Uh, really like to thank the Search Advisory Committee, uh, David North for chairing it, Linda Black, our FAR, for being part of it, uh, Michael Cook, uh, Willie Gregory, Rick Spell, and Richard Smith. I've also had a chance to meet with some of our coaches uh, and some staff, and I'd like to thank them for taking the time uh, just to welcome me. It's been a very welcoming event so far. Uh, it's been 48 hours, really, since this whole thing has occurred, from the time I got the offer uh, to press conference. I think literally 48 hours. Uh, the Board of Trustees, and especially the Executive Committee, uh, our chair, Mr. Cato Johnson, um, he's a special guy, and I know he's connected to this community, and I really look forward to working with him. Uh, Doug Edwards, Dave North, uh, who were part of that process. So Dave had double duty. Uh, and Dave has a special place in my heart and my family's heart because he made sure that we traveled really well. And so I'm, I'm, I'm indebted to Dave already. I think he did that on purpose, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Michelle Earhart, she didn't want me to say anything, but she has been so special uh, to me and my family to make sure that this transition has been really, really smooth. And I appreciate you very, very much. Uh, President Hargrave. Those nice words he said, I would like those in writing on my evaluation right now, okay? Um, but no, I, I think when, and I asked him if I could call him Bill, so I hope he doesn't mind. Uh, from the moment we sat down together, it was pretty clear to me that we shared the same vision. 
Uh, the one thing that I really appreciated about Bill outside of his humor um, is the fact that he's been at the highest level at Arkansas and Auburn, and he has a vision for this institution that he knows the athletic director must help him carry out. Otherwise, the institution can't go where it needs to go. And it was very clear to me in the process that he was looking for a partner. So, um, Bill, I'm excited to be your partner, and thank you for choosing me. Uh, a couple other individuals really quick, because you don't get to where I'm at uh, without a lot of people pouring into you. So this day is about me, but I, I really don't think it is. I think it's about everyone that's given me an opportunity. Uh, David Wilson, the president at Morgan State, hired me to be his AD when I was 36 years old. I thought I was ready, and when I got that job, I wasn't sure I was ready on the first day. Um, but I'm indebted to Dr. Wilson. Carla Williams, uh, first ever African-American female to run a Power Five. If you want to see a person who has humility, strength, and grace, you should spend some time with Carla Williams. She is one of the best people I've ever been around. Um, to my buddies who are here, Chris Grant and Kevin Barefoot, I had to give them a shout out. Um, they got on a plane and got here today to support me. They will be dissecting every word I say and beat me up on the way, on the way home. They're going to get me good. Um, and then most importantly, to my wife and to my daughter. Uh, they're right here in the front row, so if the cameras could get them, I would really appreciate y'all for that. Um, my wife and I, we've been doing this together for 17 years, man. She's been on this journey with me when we didn't have much at all. And I sold her a vision, much like I'm going to sell a lot of y'all. And she believed in me. She believed in that vision, and she's never wavered. There's been some tough days, <laughs> I'm sure, for her. Um, but she's never wavered, and she's been with me the entire time. And to my daughter, you're why I do this. You're why daddy's always away. Um, because I want your future to be better than the one I had when I was your age. And so I love you. All right. Oh, thank you. So let's talk about why Memphis. Everybody keeps asking me why Memphis. Why not? And why not right now? I love the momentum of this university. I love where the athletic department is. And let's talk about the demographics. 32% of our students at Memphis are first generation. Well, guess what? My wife and I are first generation college graduates. I was raised by a single mom. We were well below the poverty line. I didn't know my father growing up. 50% of the students at Memphis are Pell eligible. When I look at the demographics of Memphis as far as race at the university, 60% identify as non-white. I've been told I'm your first black athletic director. I'm an athletic director for the black folks, the white folks, and everybody in between. I'm here to lead and serve the University of Memphis and this community, and I'm excited to do that. The city of Memphis, your history, your grit, and the soul that you have. I want to learn about it. I want to be part of it, and I'm really, really excited for that. I think that Memphis has a chip on its shoulder. We play with a certain swagger. I see Penny here in the front row, and I know how he approached the game, and I know about the conversation we had yesterday. I want to be part of that. I've had to overachieve to get where I'm at in my life, and I know that Memphis is shooting for the stars, and I think we can achieve those. Uh, when I look at football, our brand is as strong as it's ever been. Um, I had great conversations with Ryan, and I'm excited where our football program is going to go. In case you don't know, because I heard it's up in the football building, but it's not marketed, we have the eighth longest bowl consecutive streak in America. Please clap for that. And, and our men's basketball program under Penny's leadership has won on average 21 games a year. I'm coming from Virginia. Please give him some love. I'm coming from Virginia, so I know good basketball. And I said this to Penny yesterday, and he knows what I'm about to say right now. Tony Bennett is the ultimate competitor. So I know him and Carla have our return game marked on that calendar, and I can't wait to walk in there as a Memphis Tiger. Uh, and to our Olympic sports, right? We're poised for success. I expect that we're going to have comprehensive success and we're going to be at the top of the American Athletic Conference. Because if we do that, it's going to answer the question I'm about to get in that room in a few minutes. What conference are we going to go to? We have to take care of ourselves first and put ourselves in position to be successful. If we do that, we will get into the conference of our choice. All right, under my leadership, everyone's going to want to know what is my plan. We're going to do three things. Number one, we're going to lead boldly. This is a time of change in college athletics. 
So what does that mean? That means we're going to lean into it. We're not going to be afraid to be innovative. Student athletes, student athletes, if you can hear me, I want you to hold me accountable on this. We're going to be student athlete centered and every decision we make is going to have the student athlete in our hearts and in our minds because that's why we're here. I believe in educating 18 to 22 year old young people and I will not waver in that. For the city of Memphis and the university, we're going to instill spirit, pride and loyalty through our athletic programs. Everyone's asking about what we're going to face. We know about NIL, we know about the house case, and we know about realignment. I found out I got to run a coaching search, so I'm going to be looking for a softball coach. If you have some names, do me a favor. Don't send them yet because my inbox is full. <laughs> okay, so please hold them, and I'll let you know when to send them at the appropriate time. Stadium renovation. I already got hit up by that in the meet and greet, and so I know that's a big deal for us, and I can't wait to dig in. And to Jeff Crane, the interim athletic director, uh, it's still his show until I get here. I look forward to working with him because I hear that he's got a really good aptitude for the stadium and he's somebody I'm looking forward to partner with on that project. Uh, revenue generation, everybody wants to know about it. If you don't know about college athletics, there are five buckets. Student fees are fixed, conference distributions are fixed. So what does that tell us? We got to sell more tickets, we got to fundraise, and I already met with our folks from Learfield. We need to increase our sponsorships and multimedia rights. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try to conclude because I don't want to be up here too, too long. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story, and this will tell you about my values. Every day when I take Tia to school, and she's the only one who knows what I'm going to say, but every day when I take Tia to school, I ask her five questions as we walk down the hallway, right? And the first question is this, Tia, what do we do every day? We get 1% better, Daddy. That means that we're going to have a growth mindset as an institution, as President Hargrave has, as an athletic department. We have to be better today than we were yesterday, and we damn sure have to be better tomorrow than we are today. Question number two, who are we nice to, Tia? Mom. Mommy. <laughs> the reason for that is we have to take care of the people who take care of us. I run the business, my wife runs the household, and we all know that mommy's the most special one. Amen to that. I heard an amen. Now, now I like where I'm at, right? Amen. You can say that louder. And number three, what does daddy need, Tia? Strong girls. Uh, I was raised by a single mother, as you heard me say. My wife has been with me for 17 years. I have a five-year-old daughter, and what you don't know is we have a 17-year-old female dog, Maggie. Um, so I'm surrounded by, by strong women. And that, to me, means resilience. We have to be resilient. We're going to lose some games. We're not going to win every one. But how we react and how we get back up off the mat the way the city of Memphis would is how I expect our athletic department to do that as well. Number four is a two-part question, and my daughter's getting a little too smart, so she's going to realize there's actually six questions here. But I'm going to ask them anyway. What are you, Tia? A leader. What do leaders do, Tia? They think for themselves. That's who we're going to be at Memphis. We're not trying to be anybody else down the road. We're not trying to be others that have left the conference. We're going to learn from their mistakes, and we're going to learn from what they've done, but we're going to be uniquely Memphis. I don't want to be anybody else. This is a destination for me, and so I want to be Memphis. The fifth one is probably the most important one for my leadership style. So, Tia, what is our goal every day? To make somebody's life better in day. She says it backwards, but I love her for it anyway. It's to make someone's day and life better. Now, I did not know she was going to call out these answers, so this worked out really, really good, by the way. Okay? I'm not that good. And what that means is we will be of service. We will be of service to this university. We will be of service to this community. And so the last thing that I have to say is this. I chose to be here. I had a great job at the University of Virginia. Dr. Hargrave chose me. Cato chose me. I am now representing the 901. And Memphis, we're going to need you to stand up. I'm going to call on you early. I'm going to call on you often. But when we call, we need you to come running. We cannot do this alone. So Memphis, we're going to stand up together and we're going to be proud. Okay? So with that said, go Tigers, go.
Thank you for being here. This concludes our prepared remarks. Media, you're invited to come over here into this conference room. Go Tigers, go.